With Chris Gray in the Shadow Home Secretary and projected after Friday, if the Conservatives take control uh, of this country, uh, he will be the next Home Secretary. Chris Gray, very warm welcome to my channel. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, how's the campaign been for you so far? I think it's been very encouraging. I've been around the country to many of the marginal seats we're fighting against both the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats. And the message I'm getting is very clear. We've got a, a upbeat candidates, good response on the doorsteps. We're cautiously optimistic. There's a way to go over the next couple of days, which is why we'll still be campaigning hard. But I think the response has been good and the prospects are good as well. Um, I mean, it's been difficult for you, hasn't it? Because you started this election nearly 20% ahead in, in many opinion polls, and you're now, uh, you know, only 6%. It's been how you cope with that. I think we always expected it to be a close battle. Opinion polls do strange things mid-term, particularly when governments are unpopular. But when it actually comes down to an election, people want to take the time to think about how they're going to vote. Uh, and it's always been the case. We expected a tight battle. That's what we've got. Uh, um, let's talk a bit about, you know, you, in opposition you've uh, consistently stood for civil liberties and you've voted against the anti-terror laws. That's right. uh, what happens when you become Home Secretary uh, in terms of uh, look, re looking at the pre charge of detention? Well, some things I want to change straight away, like the use of Section 44 to, uh, for routine stop and searches. You know, anti-terror power should only be used in very specific anti-terror cases. They shouldn't be used generally in the way they are at the moment. We're then going to look more broadly at the way anti-terror laws are being used. We've, we've got what I call mission creep where they're being used for a whole variety of different purposes. That shouldn't happen. I want to basically go back, redesign the terror legislation and focus it purely and entirely on dealing with the terrorist threat. Um, and what's your message to our viewers um, who are thinking about uh, not voting for the Labour Party um, but are not so keen on the Conservatives? Well, I think what I'd say to them is that there are a number of things we want to do that are different. We have huge amounts in common philosophically with people in the Muslim community, the value of family, for example. Many of the people I meet in mosques up and down the country are in small businesses who desperately need less bureaucracy, desperately need us to stop the jobs tax that will stop them employing people and cost some of their profits. But the other message I'd like to get across is, look, we understand some of the frustrations the Muslim community faces. Now, let's take the example of terrorism. I think we've got to stop talking about Islamic terrorism and talk about terrorism on its own. You know, right now we've seen attacks by dissident Republicans in Northern Ireland. Terrorism doesn't come from one source and we've got to stop the situation where too many people see terrorism as being purely an Islamic problem. It's not. Chris Greeny, thank you so much.